Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University, Mad Scientist Edition 2. And as you saw yesterday during the titration, we really need a fairly clean solution to be able to, to see the result. Even that last one with fairly modest uh, dirt floating around in it was difficult to see what happened. Now, one thing I figured out since yesterday was the instructions, as I said, they were poorly written, clearly, because we're off by a factor of 10. And I'm pretty sure the reason is because it doesn't give you percent, it gives you kilograms per metric ton <laughs> of, of stuff. Which is a more reasonable number anyhow, because you're, you're dealing with one, two, three kilograms per metric ton of solution. So that makes more sense, but that's why it was confusing is because they had the wrong units. It happens. It can be a problem. Now, here is some solution freshly decanted from the uh, ore processing. As you can see, it's essentially opaque and impossible to do that test. For other reasons, we'd also like to settle everything out of it. And the way you would do that without filtering is by using something called a flocculant. Now this is just from Home Depot, it's for pools. They call it a clarifier because when you put it in your pool it makes the little particles stick to each other. Obviously any addition you want to put the right amount in. Too much is, is a waste of money, too little is not effective. So I'm going to be testing two things. Number one, the concentration of flocculant and how it affects this and also whether or not it has adverse effects on the actual Eco Gold X gold dissolving chemical because if it wipes out your uh, lixivant then it's not going to work too well for recycling and if you recycle the water it's going to be wiping out the new lixivant you just put in. So, Due to a previous test, it was one half teaspoon per five gallon bucket came out pretty good. So that works out to about one part in 10,000, which is really, really difficult to deal with. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to dilute this about 500 to 1. That's 500 mils of water and one milliliter of the uh, flocculant. So now I take one cc into this tube two cc's into this tube by doing a little calculation ahead of time you can make life easier when you're in the lab Oh crap, that would have been nice if it hadn't done that. I'll get a little more here. It's not a precise measure. And to make sure it doesn't cause a problem with the Lix event, got eight cc's that I'm going to put in here. Now, should be pretty easy to see the difference in height in the solutions here because I put different amounts in. So to make sure it, it's all apples to apples, now rinse this out a little. This is just pure water, so I put one cc in the first bottle so 
and I'll put 9 cc's of water put 2 cc's in the second so you'll put 8 cc's of water correct and that'll leave the total volume the same And now I need, what, six. Six cc's. And uh, two cc's, right? Mm. And since I put eight cc's in here of the lixit of the loculent, I now need to put in eight cc's of clean water. In the other one, again, to give you equal concentrations. Well, these ones are not the same amount, by the way. This one is low by about two milliliters. That one's low by a little bit. This one's low by about two milliliters. Absolute precision is not my forte. Yeah. I was just bringing it to your attention. Now we're gonna make sure we agitate these pretty thoroughly to make sure things come in good contact with the solids in there. Okay, so now I'll put it up here to keep it from getting in the way. And now I need to titrate this one here. So, start with a 10 cc sample. automatic pipette bulb too. You squeeze it and then you push a little button and it, just, it applies back and when you release the button it stops so you know, it comes in nice. Okay, this should be, because this is made a tenth as concentrated as yesterday, so this should be at about the 2cc mark we should. Come on. turning. 
Okay. What do you get? 1.7? Yeah, it looks like about 1.7. Okay, so. 1.6 actually. Yeah, well, there was One a drop that fell yeah. in there. 1.7 cc's. Okay. Now we'll give this other one time to react and give these time to settle. And do some other stuff in the meantime. Okay, here it is several hours later, and we'll now see the results of things. First of all, if you look at the stuff where we're checking how fast it settles with the flock, none of them are clear yet, but you can clearly see the boundary here where the dirt is, and compared to the others, it's really high, so it looks like this is working better. It's currently not definitive. You also see a little more layer up there, but I mean, there's some really, really dirty stuff, and you'd probably want to settle it for like, eh, several hours before you even started trying to flock the solution. But anyhow, that's what we got so far. At the moment, it looks like the higher concentration is doing better. If this is doing the best, then what you need to do is run some more experiments out here where you added more and more and more and see where your optimum was. In the meantime, let's see if it has any negative effects on our leaching solution. You might also thought, well, how about the gold itself in solution? And the answer is, well, we have some samples at the lab to answer that question. As of right now, I can't give you an answer. Hopefully by tomorrow I would. Let's see. Come on. It has so little stuff in it that you tend to suck air real quick. Okay, now this is the Eco Gold X solution, nothing else in it except the flock. They were zeroed. Come on, start, start, I tell you. Now. Okay. And. 1.7. That says 1.7, and before it was just 0 0.7, right? Or was it 1.7? It was 1.7, I believe. Let's see, I wrote it down on this one. 1.7 cc's, 1.7 cc's. Okay. So that's a good thing. The flock does not neutralize the Eco Gold X itself. Whether it has an effect on the gold uh, dissolution ability is something not directly tested by this, but whenever you add anything new to your system, you always need to double check and make sure you're not screwing it up. The, I don't know, some Australian gold mining show or whatever where these guys are doing a, a heap leach down there and they were getting like algae in their fresh water ponds, so the guy decided to add hydrochloric acid to kill the algae. Now, first of all, that's not what I would have used to kill algae. I would have thought like maybe copper sulfate. It's pretty effective in low concentrations. Number two, I would have known immediately that hydrochloric acid plus sodium cyanide equals hydrogen cyanide gas, which is not a good thing, plus it gets rid of your cyanide. And they wound up losing a lot of gold in terms of recovery. Now, it's probably still in the leach pad and they'll get it eventually, but nevertheless, they tried something 
they didn't thoroughly understand and it came back to bite them. Always try it on a small scale first, double check, don't ever do it with your pad out there because if, if that gets screwed up it's very costly. So anyhow, uh, so far it looks like the flock is not a magic bullet but I've seen it do pretty good in the buckets so I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to use it uh, for that. We don't know what the effect on the gold is but it doesn't look like it's uh, causing a problem with our um, leaching solution although I mean the manufacturer said so but you know the instructions also said it this would tell me in percent not kilograms per ton. So never trust anything always double check and you'll get burned a whole lot less often and certainly a lot less painfully when it's this small. So anyhow that's where we're at at the moment. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.